welcome everybody. It's a long room, so don't hesitate to sit uh, uh, yeah, towards the front. And uh, I guess it's, uh, it's nicer to see people uh, uh, close together. And uh, thank you for attending this session where I'm going to speak, uh, or better, I'm going to call for working together for a more coherent integration of Eurovelo routes on OpenStreetMap. So first of all, uh, who are we? We are uh, from the European Cyclist Federation. So European Cyclist Federation is an NGO, which is the tran transnational coordinator of Eurovelo. Um, but it's an NGO with a very broad goal, more and better cycling for all in Europe. Uh, as you can see on this uh, little map, it's a federation of civil society organizations with over 60 members in more than uh, 40 countries, most of them in Europe, but we also have some ECF members outside of Europe, actually. And uh, we promote cycling as a sustainable and healthy means of transportation and leisure since 1983. But here I want to focus more on Eurovelo. What is Eurovelo? I guess most of you have heard about it, but maybe not everybody. So um, it's this network. It's a network of 17 long distance cycle routes connecting 38 countries um, and spanning over two, uh, 92,000 kilometers. But Eurovelo, at the moment, it's a work in progress. The whole network is not uh, realized, it's not safe for cycling everywhere. Uh, according to the quite limited data that we have at the moment, uh, the network is developed at 66% in 2023. And uh, that includes 37% of the network signed with Eurovelo signs in 24 countries. So I put here the vision for Eurovelo because I want, I want to tell you that Eurovelo is not only about uh, designing those uh, routes, it's also connecting to a kind of a broader goal. So the vision is for a fully developed and high quality European cycle route network, which is well connected to national, regional, and so local cycle route networks and other uh, sustainable modes of transport, and driving further increases in everyday cycling and cycling tourism in line with ECF vision to improve and increase cycling across the whole of Europe. Reading it, but anyway. So it's, uh, it's not only, not just about uh, implementing cycle routes. Um, Eurovelo is a success story, uh, we think because uh, in general, there's a, a big increase of uh, bike, bike counts on Eurovelo, especially since uh, COVID times, uh, a lot of people went cycling and this data is based on the um, eco counters that are placed along Eurovelo routes, plus 11% of bike count. Mm, last year, we had almost 2 million visitors on the Eurovelo website and 76,000 um, people following us on social media. I didn't check for this year, but I think it, w it went up. So it's a lot of people, but um, yeah, we want to give them a bit more also. Uh, obviously, ECF is an NGO, and inside ECF, we are seven people working on Eurovelo, so we are not the ones um, going there and implementing on those routes. How we are doing this, we have an organization with a network of national Eurovelo coordination centers. A bit long, we call them NECCs. Uh, we have 24 at the moment. What you see in um, uh, like strong yellow is the consortiums of NEC NECCs that are as consortiums, uh, gathering several organizations inside the country, sometimes governmental bodies as well. It's very good because it means there is some money to be put there. Things can uh, go a bit faster. In light yellow, it's the coordinators. It's generally only one association, and they are doing their best to uh, make things happen in those countries. They are responsible for the implementation, coordination, quality assurance, and uh, communication of your velo at national level. And we work with a subsidiarity principle. This is quite important because it means uh, we cannot do anything we want. We cannot say, um, also with the data, we cannot do anything we want. We cannot take their data and, uh, and very easily put it out there. We need to, uh, yeah, give, they need to give us the authorization. They can decide when the route changes. And um, yeah, about your velo structure. Uh, so the point, here is that we want, we see Eurovelo routes as backbones of cycling networks. Um, that's also 
uh, why we, we like to work with people from all countries, because in countries where cycling levels are not very high yet, uh, Eurovelo routes can work as boosters. And uh, we encourage them to always think with a national strategy in mind, a national strategy to build the cycle network uh, in the area. Even if Eurovelo routes come first, there should be uh, an action plan for more. And I want already to link a bit to OpenStreetMap here because what I find interesting uh, is that the structure of Eurovelo route on OpenStreetMap is very well connected to this uh, in a way that uh, uh, Eurovelo routes are comprised of national uh, segments, which are comprised of regional segments. So it's very easy to see this uh, structure on OpenStreetMap. Now, um, Eurovelo, if we want to develop Eurovelo to make it better, it's, uh, um, yeah, it has everything to do with data. We need more data, we need better data, and we need to do something with this data. We need to be able to uh, analyze it. So what do we have in place uh, at the moment on our side of things, let's say? We have a database um, uh, uh, on the Eurovelo backend, uh, but this database is very incomplete. We have data collected through a survey app um, realized in-house by ECF. Um, it's very new. We have also an import module allowing to import external data if it's converted to our, um, uh, our format. So uh, looking at OSM, there would be a possibility to, to import data if we keep using our own database. What we do with the data, we have uh, something called the European Certification Standard. It's a methodology developed also by ECF to assess the quality of cycle routes uh, based on the GIS survey data and on criteria for uh, what are the needs of long distance cyclists, depending on their expertise. And then, since we have this network of uh, national coordinators, we have launched uh, two years ago uh, the um, Eurovelo GIS subgroup. So it's a working group to build expertise, harmonize data between countries, discuss data licenses, and so on. It's very useful because we have already discussed open data with them. Not everybody is on the same page in all countries. Not everybody um, uh, has talked about these topics before, but it's a, it's a great place where we can also continue discussing with them about OpenStreetMap. Uh, and then, of course, we have the Eurovelo website, the front end, eurovelo.com, which is our interface with users to communicate about the route quality, uh, where we uh, put the downloadable GPX tracks uh, last year. And this is where also we really want to improve because uh, at the moment, what is uh, given to users, maybe some of you have uh, had the opportunity to check. It's not very precise. It's um, a very vague categories of developed, under development. Nobody knows what's behind. And also us, sometimes we are not totally sure what's uh, behind. So uh, I'm coming to the um, core of why I'm here. Eurovelo and OpenStreetMap. Why working together? And um, what can we do together? So. Obviously, for us, it's uh, very interesting when we look at OpenStreetMap and we see a lot of potential for uh, enhancing uh, the accuracy and consistency on Eurovelo tracks, on OpenStreetMap itself, and also on all the platforms uh, that take the data directly from OpenStreetMap. So it's a, it's a way to make sure it's uh, clear for everybody. Um, we can make use of the GIS data available uh, in route quality analysis, in our communication to users, uh, also, we see it as a possible quality control tool. Obviously, there are a lot of discrepancies between the data that we receive from our partners and the data that has been mapped on the ground. Um, but we can see it in both ways. It can be um, yeah, a, an interesting information to send to our national partners so that they check maybe they have an incomplete data. On the other hand, if we realize that they have better data because maybe there are not so many mappers in their area, um, we can also improve OSM data where we find it, so it can go both ways. And uh, in terms of our long-term goals, uh, in, in the strategy of Eurovelo, we would like really to get this uh, network highly developed. Maybe we will even remove parts, but we would like to get it highly developed by 2030. And um, using OpenStreetMap would be a way to really um, increase the uh, the speed in which we can do this and uh, uh, find where improvements are required um, to reach this goal. 
Um, how is your overlaw in OpenStreetMap now? Uh, I just want to give you a quick uh, uh, information about this. So this is from the from the wiki because I um, I have not gotten involved in the edits and so on myself. But on the wiki, uh, your overlaw routes in OpenStreetMap are so stored as uh, relations, more specifically super relations. There is a suggesting uh, tagging, tagging system already. So um, uh, I'll let you read it. Uh, the standard practice is to create one root relation per national Eurovelo route. Uh, and in general, those are super relations themselves already because it includes the, uh, the regional uh, segments or the local routes. Uh, and yeah, these relations are grouped together as super relations and we have the Eurovelo route. So it's quite logical, I think. Seems to work. Um, so yeah, this is a little uh, uh, tree, um, uh, yeah, tree structure of how it looks like. And as I was saying before, it's very interesting because it gives us a lot of information on the members of the route uh, in when we go more local, when we uh, zoom in, and on which other routes overlap. Um, and this is also from the wiki page. I found it very interesting to see this table. Uh, and what is incomplete now on Eurovelo, because we can see that mm, uh, it's not as if only the, the non-developed parts of Eurovelo or the parts at the planning stage would be missing. Uh, we see that there are uh, non-developed parts, at least from what we know, that are on your own OpenStreetMap. For instance, Eurovelo 2 goes to Belarus. Belarus is mapped, but uh, from our information, it's not very well developed. Maybe your information is wrong also. It's interesting. Um, also, I see here Eurovelo 11 in Hungary is uh, shown as missing. I, I didn't check in detail, but we have information that it's developed. So it's interesting to see that it's, uh, uh, yeah, there would be a lot of, uh, of fact checking to do. And uh, finally, before opening the discussion, I wanted to just show you a bit of the issues we have, uh, um, we have uh, uh, noticed. So as I was saying, the suggested Tagging system seems logical, to me at least. Uh, so it would be interesting to look for issues. Uh, am I missing something? Um, is it problematic in, in some country or not? Also, what about super relations? We were discussing yesterday uh, in the hiking group that it can be complicated when extracting this data because for some uh, websites or apps using uh, data from OpenStreetMap, they uh, forget to, uh, or they don't know exactly how to extract the super relation data. So it's good to, to double check that. I don't know if that's exactly what's happening here, but I put these two maps because it's like uh, Waymarked Trails and CycloSM are the two websites that are linked from the Eurovelo wiki page. But we see it's not the same, like Norway exists on Waymarked Trail and not on, on CycloSM. Uh, there are a few other differences. So. Yeah, where does it come from? Why, why is it not extracted in the same way uh, everywhere? Another issue um, is where parts of Eurovelo routes are missing. So for instance, on Eurovelo 12 in uh, Denmark, um, one colleague had realized that there was a part that was existing on OpenStreetMap but missed uh, tags to link it to Eurovelo 12. So these uh, sort of things can happen here and there. Mm. A big thing is the discrepancy between uh, OpenStreetMap and Eurovelo tracks. Uh, so for instance, uh, an example here where uh, we can see the track doesn't go in the same place. So who is correct? Uh, is it missing an update? Or is it our national coordinators who are missing an update? Uh, is the signing somewhere else? Um, on, uh, in Andalusia, for instance, on OpenStreetMap, the Eurovelo route forks which uh, never happens except uh, in case of reverse, reverse forking themselves. But uh, so why is that? What happened? Is it also an update that has been uh, um, done, but uh, the route has uh, kept something in, on an open street map? Or uh, yeah, why, why is it like that? And here it's interesting also because, um, uh, yeah, I was notified that there were uh, signs, Eurovelo signs in Paris uh, not following the official track. And uh, I checked a bit on OpenStreetMap, and I saw it's even uh, mentioned there. So uh, Eurovelo3.fr is not in accordance with signposts within Paris. So we can actually see this kind of issue on OpenStreetMap. And this is typically the kind of 
information we want to um, feedback to our national coordinator. Um, but yeah, this opens up the more general question of how to deal with updates when we have updates from our national coordinators, subsidiarity principle, we are supposed to do it. So if it doesn't correspond to OpenStreetMap, we, we need to have a process. We need to have a way uh, for this to happen um, in, a, yeah, in a structured uh, manner. And uh, yeah, another big issue that needs to yeah, be discussed, I suppose, what to do with undeveloped parts of the network, what to do with sections at the planning stage. If it's a developed section missing Eurovelo signs, I think it's easy. We can say, um, yeah, just it's Eurovelo, but it's not signed, but you can cycle on it, okay? But when the route is just a plan, or in some countries where the route is the only, like the best possible solution available for cyclists, but still it's not really re reaching any kind of quality level, should we map it? Should we not map it? Um, and on the other hand, I think it's good to identify sections that are so bad that they cannot be marked as cycling, as cyclable on OpenStreetMap. It gives us interesting information to lobby in those countries, to give our partners uh, some concrete facts to lobby with for more, um, uh, yeah, more money on cycling. Uh, and ultimately, maybe to remove those parts from the network also, because that's another way to reach the quality levels by uh, 2030. Um, yeah, so that's it for the state, uh, current state uh, of Eurovelo on OpenStreetMap. And I want to uh, basically call for the creation of an international uh, working group, uh, OpenStreetMap Eurovelo working group, um, so that we can work together to find solutions to the issues and harmonize the inclusion of Eurovelo routes on OpenStreetMap. Uh, I think. Yeah, we can have common goals between a lot of people involved in the OpenStreetMap community to uh, give information, build the high quality cycle route network, communicate it, uh, to disseminate accurate data on the various platforms that use OpenStreetMap data. Um, yeah, and that sort of things. But of course, as I was saying, we have very limited resources in the Eurovelo team. Uh, so that's why I'm calling for help, for available energies. We also don't have a lot of technical knowledge on, on OpenStreetMap, and we don't have a lot of funding to push on this. But I think uh, when we start working with the community, we will also get um, yeah, more knowledge uh, on the topic, and we will um, maybe be better at identifying potential uh, opportunities, potential uh, projects that we could uh, apply for, uh, because there are so many uses uh, of this work uh, that if we learn how to communicate it better, it should yeah, go, go well. Um, so thank you very much for your attention. And I think we still have 10 minutes for questions, discussions. Uh, so I welcome them. And you are very welcome to uh, contact me also later on. And just to inform, I think I will try next week or the week after to also put this call on um, some website with the OpenStreetMap community. I have to, you can tell me what is the best place to start. Uh, if not, I will start somewhere. Thank you. Okay, so do we have any, thank you Florence, do we have any questions? One down here. I think one, thank you for this great presentation. I was interested, especially in this one part where you say there are the routes that are not signposted, uh, because I mostly do the Belgian, Swiss, and Italian routes, and it's a, a huge difference in Switzerland. Everything is signposted, and Italy sometimes not. And I saw that on the Eurovilla website, basically, uh, what is shown as the route is really the thing coming from OpenStreetMap. Um, it's directly implemented, I think, from Open, or at least I have that um, idea. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, what that. is shown on Eurovelo.com, uh -huh. nothing comes from OpenStreetMap at the moment. Oh, okay. Everything comes from information we have from our national coordinators. So the process is that uh, once a year, we send them all an email. We say, it's a spring clean time. Please send us your updates. And they send us your update. Normally, yeah, it should correspond to what's on OpenStreetMap if they tell us the truth. But uh, yeah. Got it. I think the, the problem we have as, as mappers sometimes is we map what is signposted because you can verify it on the ground. So if it's just 
uh, kind of the official route, but uh, going there and do I make the left or the right and there's not a sign, then it's kind of hard to tell, how to verify this. So I think this is something that we'd have to kind of yeah, solve yeah, because it's one of these like ground principles of uh, OpenStreetMap, if not the one ground principle. But it would be great, of course, to have these routes, but I understand that signposting half of Europe is an, an enormous task. So. Yeah, yeah. It, it's something we had discussed before a little bit with uh, OpenStreetMap Benjamin, and I think it's a very good point. But also at the moment when we look at uh, the um, yeah what's on OpenStreetMap, loads of routes are shown tagged as Eurovelo without being signposted. So I think it's also about finding um, a clear way to uh, to map it over different countries. I I would guess that in some countries, since the route is not signed and not developed. Someone just took the the tracks from Eurovelo.com and uh, tagged it as such on your on OpenStreetMap, but uh, I don't know exactly what happened there. Yeah, maybe we need to do more mapping of where um, the signs are missing and something can have a tag for that or sign damage, you know, because I think a lot of I've done the cycle mapping and you kind of, sometimes you can work out the gaps just because it's the obvious way to cycle, but interesting problems. Um, any other questions? Or was that? I think that's it. So thank you, Florence. Thank you, and feel free to connect uh, afterwards. So, we've got to. Um, I'll let um, our next speaker, Edge, set up, and um, so we've got a few minutes. I think at the end of each talk, we've got clap well to compete with the main room that we can hear through the wall. Um, <laughs> I don't know how well they hear us. Um, but yeah, we've got about five minutes to set up and uh, and see if anyone comes from other talks. Oh, is that a question from online? Oh, Florence, question. I might be able to sit here. Do you know the quality assurance tool Knupertet? and specifically its monitor? I do not, uh, but I'm interested to take note of it. OK, yeah, I can you. show you the spelling and you can uh, Yeah, perfect. Look at that. Thank you very much. Oh, OK, we can do, yeah, we'll do one more question. I'll come down here with the mic. Uh, do you plan on solely le solely relying on the Eurovelo community to map the Eurovelo, ro Eurovelo routes, or do you also plan to hire people to actively do it for you? Um, it would be great to hire more people to work on GIS, but at the moment it's not uh, resources that exist at ECF. And from yeah, what I know of how these things work, it's better to start working on it so we can uh, be very clear and express the needs and the impacts and uh, kind of convince um, yeah, whoever uh, is making budgets to hire more people. So uh, I cannot say exactly for now, but uh, I think it's gonna remain within the Eurovelo uh, team for the coordination. Uh, and we still have this subsidiarity principle. I see it the best way would be to basically have uh, the IS people working on OpenStreetMap in all our national coordinators and that they could uh, make things connect uh, in their countries where they know the field because this, this is how we want to proceed. Like we, we don't know the reality of the terrain and we should be more making strategic decisions and uh, making sure everybody is on the same page, uh, helping all of the national coordinators to uh, gain new knowledge, new competencies. Uh, but yeah, that's why I want to maybe make a working group and maybe connect with our Eurovelo GIS working group uh, and kind of uh, go from there. 